It's playoff football time, and if you remember the Fog Bowl of 1988, we've got the same condition here today. It's foggy at Foxborough. In the divisional playoffs, the Steelers appeared lost in a fog. A disappointing loss left them short of their Super Bowl goal. And just as the Steelers' 1996 season ended in a haze, it also began under a cloud of uncertainty. In the preseason, no one knew what to expect of the defending AFC champions, a team that was counting on new players at several key positions and looking for a new starter to emerge at quarterback. Things grew more uncertain in week one when all-pro linebacker Greg Lloyd was lost for the season in a disheartening defeat in Jacksonville. With their emotional leader gone, many believe the Steelers' season was lost as well. But this team knows all about beating the odds. We've been doing that for the past few years, you know. We uh, lose a few key guys and we always have guys who step up and uh, take over the role. One play at a time, and remember, we control the tempo in our house, baby. Let's go. You have a unique group of individuals that believe in winning, and we expect to win every weekend. And I think when you get that mixture in the locker room, no matter who comes and goes, the core of it's still there. We've lost some players and we've lost players beginning of the year, we've lost players down the stretch, but the one thing that this team is is pretty resilient. Uh, they keep coming back and uh, a team that uh, is going to fight you to the very end. With the season seemingly in jeopardy, the Steelers needed to carry each other if they hoped to turn things around. And they began their reversal of fortune in week two against Baltimore. Second down and 10. Play action fake. Intercepted by Woodson. 35 30, 25 20. Nothing from sideline. Rod Woodson that quickly just opens up the Steelers scoring defensively. Offensively, veteran Mike Tomzak took over at quarterback and threw for two scores in the Steelers' win. The following week, new feature back Jerome Bettis made his mark on Monday Night Football with 133 yards rushing and two scores. And while the Steelers' offense pounded the Bills on the ground, the defense cut off Buffalo's airways with four interceptions. Kelly with a deep drop has all day. Steps up, now he's going to run to the left, and he fakes a dump, and he's hit, and it's intercepted! Here comes the Steeler up the sideline, and he's going to go all the way! Cornell Lake stepped in front of that pass and just went bye-bye! In their next game, the Steelers continued to make the big play. Going to throw it out to play action pick on first down, and he airs it out down the field. But there's no receiver. Oh, what a play by Charles Johnson for the touchdown! The streaking Steelers were too much for the Oilers as they forced five Houston turnovers to take over first place in the AFC Central. And he dumps it off, and it's intercepted! And driving in there is Darren Perry down to the goal line, and he is going to be for the Steelers touchdown, the knockout punch is here. The Steelers had won three straight games at home, but many still wondered if they could survive in a hostile environment. On a Monday night in Kansas City, Mike Tomczak answered the challenge. Tomczak threw for 338 yards in his best performance of the season. The 
Steelers carved up the Chiefs defense as Jerome Bettis rushed for his fourth straight 100-yard game. Right side Bettis, and Bettis runs into the pile, and he's still on his feet, and he gets to the goal line for the touchdown. An amazing run by the bus. Bill Cowher's team had beaten the odds and won a game few thought they could. With four straight wins, the 4-1 Steelers were benefiting from veteran leadership on offense as well as defense, where sideline Greg Lloyd continued to show young players the way. Right. So what you got to do when you beat him and you see it coming, just blow it. Two things. You just blow it up. That's all you can do. Pittsburgh once again put fear into the eyes of opposing quarterbacks. Pressure came from linemen like Joel Steed, Keevan Henry, Bill Johnson, and Brenton Buckner, as well as young linebackers like number 54 Dante Jones and rookies Carlos Emmons and number 50 Earl Holmes. New starter Jason Gilden had a career-high seven sacks, while Chad Brown led the team with 13 after moving into Greg Lloyd's position on the outside. Jerry Olsofsky stepped in as a starter on the inside next to rising star LeVon Kirkland. Kirkland led the team in tackles, and his athleticism allowed him to drop into coverage as effectively as he dropped ball carriers. Kelly back again. He's going to lock one this time. And it's intercepted by LeVon Kirkland over the shoulder. Oh, is that Kirkland something? He'd be launching a Pro Bowl for sure. Yeah, thank you. You're exactly right. Kirkland did earn his first Pro Bowl berth. And in week seven, he led an all-out assault on the Bengals. Let's go out there and kick some butt, baby. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. D-O-3. One, two, three, three. The Steelers would finish second in the NFL in sacks, and on this day, they tied a team record with 10 against the overmatched Bengals. Boy, look here, you gotta live the opportunities to kill a quarterback. Get him! Oh, yes! Blake is back, and he is sacked on the play! A great job by LeVon Kirkland! They stripped the football! They're gonna call it a return for the touch! What is the signal? Touchdown, Steelers! The Steelers had run their winning streak to five by playing tough, smart football. The type that makes a difference in close games like the down-to-the-wire finish in Atlanta, where the dependable Norm Johnson decided the outcome. The snap is down, the kick is on its way, that kick is up. This game is over. The Steelers win it on Norm Johnson's golden right foot. After beating countless odds, the Steelers stood at 6-2 and two at the season's halfway point. I love this, baby. You can't get up for this game. You don't need to be here. In 1996, a new bus route ran through Pittsburgh. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It got me cranking up now. It cranking me up. The bus was Jerome Bettis, and after being acquired in an off-season trade, he rolled into Pittsburgh like he had a new set of wheels. Bettis rumbled for more than 1,400 yards, including five straight 100-yard games, and scored 11 touchdowns as the team's most valuable player. From the Buffalo 43, here comes the bus, and he's got that head of steam. He's breaking tackles. He's still on his feet at the 30, the 25, the 20. The bus goes 43 express. Jerome Bettis, Jerome Bettis, he is surely the real thing, he ain't no head of lettuce. Yoy, Jerome Bettis. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, way to go. Hey, we'll keep on counting there. Bettis was helped by one of football's best offensive lines, once again anchored by the game's premier center, Dermonte Dawson. Dawson has started every game since 1989, and last season started his fifth straight Pro Bowl. 
Justin Strelzik was a solid starter at right tackle and was joined by number 68, Brendan Stein, Bernard Daphne, Jim Sweeney, and number 62, Tom Mislinski. Veteran tackle John Jackson and free agent guard Will Wolford were also part of the road crew that opened the avenues for the bus. In week 10, the line helped Bettis leave tire tracks all over his former team. They said I was done, over with, finished. Yeah. When they get a load of me. The give is to the bus, and the bus walks into the end zone for that Steeler touchdown against his former teammate. Bettis ran roughshod over the Rams, gaining over 100 yards in the first half and finishing with 129 and two scores. His performance set the tone for the most complete Steelers win of the season as they dominated every phase of the game. Well, the kick is high, but not particularly deep. And with the football, out across the 10 to 15 is Pee Wee the 20, 25, 30. Open field at the 40. Here comes Eric Pegram. One man to beat. Here he comes, breathing up his back. He cuts inside, and he's going the other way to the left. 20, 15, 10. Eric Pegram goes all the way for that Steeler touchdown. What's wrong? Are you just tired? You got yes, a number here on how to get it. You ain't got to well, get yourself in shape and you won't have this problem. <laughs> Eric Pigram caught his breath long enough to score his second touchdown of the day late in the fourth quarter. With the victory well in hand, Pigram had taken over for Bettis, who was pulled from the game just shy of a thousand yards for the season and then pestered his coach to put him back in. You're not closing me for the day, are you? Uh, nay. No, no, no. I only need about 30, 40 more for the thousand. Come on now, let's get back on the field. Last time. Damn, is he becoming a pain in the ass. I want to get back on the phone. Is your dad here today? Yeah. You tell him I need to talk to him after this game. Nope. <laughs> I'm talking to your mom and dad afterwards. I'm, all right, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell Mr. and Mrs. Bess I need to see him. It's like a parent, parent-teacher conference. <laughs> While Bettis made his parents proud, Bill Cower celebrated a landmark victory with a 50th win of his young career. Coach, we want to award you uh, the game ball for your 50th, 50th win. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. want to play two, but, but which way you want to fin, assuming they want to kick? I, we're going to kick out way. We're going to kick we're out defend way. The score. It wasn't easy for Bill Cower to orchestrate a winning season in 1996 as he faced unique challenges and a symphony of strange plays. Back is Tom Zack, fires a pass, it's knocked into the air, intercepted with the football, and it's now loose, and the Steelers have it! Put that in the highlight film. That, that'll make your NFL videos now for all the wrong reasons. Punt formation, hits it inside the five, but it goes into the end zone for the touchback. Put it in the books. The mascot gets a touchback. <laughs> <laughs> That's 12 men on a field. The smile on Bill Cower's face tells the story. Fortunately, Cower's special teams didn't always encounter such obstacles. Let's go. Let's cover now. Let's go. Nice kick. Cover men like Lethon Flowers. Randy Fuller, Dante Jones, and Myron Bell raced under the kicks of Norm Johnson and Josh Miller to make the big play. Fred McAfee, Chris Oldham, and Orpheus Roy also made an impact on a coverage unit that mirrored the enthusiasm of its head coach. Norm, great kick, great kick. You tell me this ain't the best special teams in the league. Good job! Cower was both a fiery motivator and master innovator, always finding new ways to tap the unique talents of his players. And once again, no individual gave Cower more options than Cordell Stewart, the second-year quarterback slash receiver who has become arguably the most exciting player in football. In the shotgun again is Tom Zach. 
Here comes a long pass. And into the end zone for the touchdown. That is Cordell Stewart. And I do believe Slash caught that ball with one hand. Steelers fans began to sense that every time Stewart touched the ball, something special was about to happen. As a receiver, he was a constant breakaway threat, and as a quarterback, he was the most elusive scrambler in the game. Against Carolina, his 80-yard touchdown was the longest scoring run by a quarterback in NFL history. Play action fake bootleg for Cordell. He's going to run forward, and he's got some room. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, foot race to the 40. There goes Slash up the left sideline, 80 yards for the Steeler touchdown. How about that? I can't believe it. If you think that guy ain't going to be a heck of a quarterback in his National Football League, baloney. While both Stewart and Jim Miller give the Steelers young quarterbacks with potential, the team can also turn to the veteran savvy of Mike Tomczak, who has found a new star emerging at receiver. Third-year man Charles Johnson reached new heights with a breakout season that saw him surpass 1,000 yards receiving. Back is Tomczak again. This time throws it down the field, and it's caught by Charles Johnson, and he's going to go! A 70-yard touchdown reception for C.J. While Johnson became the Steelers' big play target, Andre Hastings led the team in catches and solidified a receiving core beset by injuries. Tight end Mark Bruner had a promising season cut short, and Yancey Thigpen was hampered by nagging injuries all year, but returned to form in Week 12 with two touchdowns to help spark a win over Jacksonville. Tom Zach straight back. Pops once, throws for the end zone. There's a man open. Touchdown, Steelers! What a great leaping grab by Yancey Thigpen. Let's go! They all get in the end zone. Let's go! Brunello's back. He's hit on a loose football and stripping the ball. Here comes Cornell Lake, picks it up. He's on the dead run and he will go all the way for a Steeler touchdown. Cornell Lake on the blitz, knocked the ball loose, picked it up on the box and was gone. The win improved the Steelers to 8-3 and, and the following week they rallied from a 14-3 deficit on a Monday night in Miami. Fullback Tim Lester drew the Steelers close, and in the final minutes, Mike Tomczak hit Ernie Mills for the game winner. Two weeks later, the defense set the tone as Jason Gilden recorded two of the team's five sacks. The AFC's number one ranked defense held the Chargers to less than 150 total yards as Keevan Henry, Joel Steed and company smothered San Diego in a flurry of tackles and takeaways. And here comes the snow again, but come on snow, we don't care. The give is to Russell and Russell drives and he's hit shy of the first down fumble, picked up and the Steelers have it. Ravani picked it up after Osowski made the hit. The defense sealed the Steelers' fourth division title in five years as a team that appeared to have no hope at the start of the season now marched on to the playoffs. Here we go, Steelers! Here we go! After battling the odds all year, the Steelers looked to keep up the fight in the postseason. Let's get after him and I'll wait for the next guy. Let's be physical right from the get-go. Let's go. Second man is Falk. He gets through a hole. And he's hit hard. What a play by Rod Woodson, who came up and threw a blocker into Falk's path and knocked him both down. The Steelers came out clicking in every aspect of the game. Rookie Jaheen Arnold provided Pittsburgh with outstanding field position early on and his first quarter return set up the game's first touchdown. Tight eye behind Slash in a power formation. Slash sneaks it over the goal line for that Steeler touchdown. Despite dominating most of the first half, the Steelers found themselves trailing the Colts at intermission. 
Many wondered if Pittsburgh would respond to the challenge in the second half. Let's go now. The blitz shown by Indy. And through a hole comes the bus at the 50. First down, 45. Still on his feet at the 40. On the opening drive of the third quarter, Jerome Bettis and the offense made a statement, rumbling 91 yards in 16 plays to shift the momentum for good. Can't stop the bus, baby. Can't stop the bus. It's third and goal. Cordell turns, gives to the bus, and the bus turns for the Steelers yeah. touchdown on left tackle. Go, Big D! Come on, Big D! <laughs> Cardell Lake and the defense held the Colts to 22 yards in the second half. They pitch it back, it's loose, and the Steelers have it! Cardell Lake spins over the ball. Yeah, the Steelers have it deep in Colts territory. And this is a deep handoff to Whitman. Whitman through a hole, still on his feet at the 25. The 2015-10 touchdown, Pittsburgh. John Whitman, a 31-yard ramble with a score, and John Whitman has his first as a Steeler. In the fourth quarter, Cordell Stewart capped the scoring with his second touchdown of the day. Pittsburgh scored 29 unanswered points in a dominating victory that showed the true spirit and determination of this Steelers team. Though their season would end the following week in the New England fog, the Steelers had come further than many ever expected. I look at it as a season that we did accomplish a lot. Uh, we did probably do some things that some people didn't think we could do. Let's go now. Big challenge, man. Big challenge today. We've been able to overcome adversities, and there was a good uh, blend of people that were able to overcome injury after injury. Hey, it's the time of the year right now. We got to pick it up a notch. 60 minutes, right to the get go. Let's go. you look at it as being a season that fell short, I also look at it as a season that really showed some of the true character of our football team. And so I look at it uh, really as a season that uh, could be the backbone for something for us to go further next year. The 1996 Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that could have given in, but instead chose to give its all. And in a season that could have been lost, the Steelers pulled together to beat the odds with the heart and pride of a champion.